It's great for opening up the groin, aka the apple. So I've been pretty exhausted all day today, uh, but you know, still showed up to the gym as I do. So I'm taking today as an opportunity to work on mobility. It feels like a lot of my muscles are tight and at least I think over the past week I haven't given mobility as much attention as I did in the weeks prior. So today I'm going to combine the sled with uh, some mobility work. And on the sled, I'm going to give, go relatively light, um, using the sled to kind of give, uh, I guess, a relatively heavy uh, weight training component to the workout. So since it's heavy and requires the legs to move, or uh, not heavy heavy, but still quite a bit more weight than mobility exercises, it will keep my heart rate a little higher than if I were to just do mobility work. And so I'm going to use the sled to get my heart rate a little high and then superset that with uh, mobility movements to work on mobility. So I think I'm, at least for now, I'm just going to do slab, a reverse sled as my sled movement and then superset that with either some body weight based or kettlebell based mobility stuff. So for the first mobility exercise, so doing Cossack squats. So regular body weight Cossack squat is when your feet are like wide apart and then you squat into one leg. So like that. And then the opposing leg. Good for opening up the hips and the groin area. I don't know, for whatever reason, that area is super tight. I wonder what did it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to use the kettlebell along with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it. <sighs> Almost as somewhat of a balance. Go to the center, deadlift up. <clears throat> go to the center, deadlift up. I'm going to go for five each side. Oh, <sighs> yeah, I don't know if you see a couple videos ago, my Cossacks were a lot more comfortable than today. Holy shit. Oh, man, yeah, something's really up. Oof. Yeah, there is definitely extra immobility in the left side. I have to figure that out. Anyway, like I said, good day to work on mobility.
Yes. Anyway, I'm hoping my hip opens up as the workout goes on. And all my my mobility moves look less mediocre than that. But anyway, this is what I'm starting with. Sled to that as my first mobility exercise. So I'm gonna record my sled work on this set too, but I think if I stick to reverse sled on the next one, then I'm not recording anything. Anyway, with uh, the kettlebell, what I'm doing for mobility this time is focusing on hamstring mobility one leg at a time by doing legs, elevated stiff leg deadlifts. So in this movement, I'm trying to target the mobility of the right or the hamstring, the mobility of the hamstring and the glute of the leg that's elevated. It will also translate into some lower back mobility as well. So keeping my leg elevated, the left leg doesn't need to be 100% straight, but shouldn't be super bent either. And I'm going to bend down ever so slowly with the goal of, or with the mental goal of trying to touch, touch my chest to my knee. <clears throat> or my head to my knee, sorry. I'm gonna do five reps of that each side. You should feel a really good stretch in your hamstring and kind of radiating into the glute and the lower back. Switching sides after five. I feel like I'm rushing through my reps a little. I think I should slow it down just a little. Nice. And again, supersetting it with uh, reverse sled. And in this case, it becomes a quad and hamstring superset. <sighs> so that should give you a really good leg pump since it's uh since one movement is a hamstring and the other movement is a quad movement i don't know i've talked about supersetting buys and tries for uh arm workouts and how good of a pump that gives me and a similar concept kind of applies to legs as well like whenever you superset a quad and a hamstring movement the pump that you feel in the legs is quite nice. Also, hamstring movements give, uh, or hamstring stretch movements give a nice pump. Also, uh, reverse sled gives a nice pump. So yeah. Uh, the sled has a mobility component to it too. Uh, with every step of the sled, your leg your, is in a knee over toe position, but not in a, a way where it loads directly on it. So you're able to build strength in the knee in just that local or just that, um, I don't know, localized or that restricted, restricted range of motion with the, by the knees over the toe, by the knees over the toe. But since most traditional lifts 
uh, at least how people do it usually, uh, recommend people to not do uh, like a full depth squat or whatever. The knee is seldom over the toes. And so it's a good way of introducing load to the legs in the knee over toe position um, while being safe. Anyway, I'm going to do three to five sets of that. So I'm not going to record the reverse leg portion of this superset, um, but doing a very similar movement to the previous exercise um, where um, I'm doing a leg elevated movement, but this time I'm going to face uh, sideways, I guess. So I'm going to keep my leg on my heel. If you do it this way versus this way, the kind of muscles that you're going to feel the stretch is going to be a little bit different. Uh, I think I'm going to like alternate sets between uh, where my heel's planted and then uh, the side of the leg is planted. When the side of the leg is planted, you're getting a lot more groin adductors. Uh, when it's on the heel, you're going to feel a lot more direct impact on the hamstring but you'll still feel it a little bit in the groin <coughs> both areas are tight so i'm just going to alternate uh, and i'm thinking about doing four sets anyway this is what the movement looks like uh again trying to not be uh don't have to be super straight with the other leg uh, but don't want to bend it too much either. I'm going to go for five each leg. Switching sides. You can also hold it with one arm. I'm just choosing to hold it with both arms. With all of these little variations where you hold it with one arm, both arm, or side, or side leg, or straight leg, all will hit. The muscles are a little different and just cycle through all these different variations either on the same day or on different days. And even with my back, I'm trying to keep it mostly straight, but I'm not too worried if it rounds a little. I'm going to superset that with reverse sled. I'm going to do at least four sets of that. So for the next exercise, I'm doing Jefferson curls. So Jefferson curls, I don't I don't need to be this high for it, but it is what it is. Uh, it's already set up this way. I don't know if I'm in frame. Probably shouldn't be this high. Um, going to Laura can you see if I'm in frame then can you move it further back so 
So for the next exercise, doing Jefferson curls. So um, get a, holding a relatively light kettlebell. And then here I'm going to round my back and try to get the kettlebell to sink below my toes while keeping a straight leg. Really good for, uh, I guess, hamstring and hip mobility. Uh, with this movement, the goal is to be able to use your spine in the rounded position so that you're not weak in that position. So, like, you don't want to always round your spine. A rounded spine, I don't think, is the strongest position for your body to be in. But that being said, it is. it shouldn't be acceptable that your spine is super weak in the rounded position. So it is good to train it in the rounded position so that so that um, the probability of injury is low. I'm going for eight reps. I'm going to superset that with sled. I'm going to do three to four sets of that. So moving away from the sled a little, uh, going to focus on opening up my hips a little bit more, uh, specifically targeting the hip flexors, both, um, I guess, flexion and stretching. So for uh, the hip flexor flexion, getting the kettlebell around my feet and going to do um, 10 hip flexions, but not going to let the feet touch the floor so that there's constant tension on the hip flexor. Ten reps, then switching sides. <sighs> Having my leg lower than the flat position allows the hip flexor to stretch just a little bit more. <sighs> So I prefer doing this on a bench or elevated surface for that reason. Supersetting that with uh, ATG split squats on an elevated surface. So on an elevated surface, the amount of pressure that's on the quads is a lot lesser. And I'm able to focus more exclusively on the stretch of the hip flexor. So that's why I'm choosing to do it on an elevated surface. 
for this super set. Switching sides after five. Ah, going for five reps each side. I think I just said that. So yeah, targeting hip flexion with the kettlebell and then stretching it out. So training both the ability of the hip flexor to shorten and lengthen. Um, having long, strong hip flexors help you run faster and just overall be much more comfortable moving around. But yeah, I'm gonna do this for a bit. So for the final superset of today's workout, I'm gonna do this hip opener where my one leg is going to be pointed that way. And I'm going to like bend in and out, but I'm gonna hold the weight while doing it to make it harder and get better mobility gains. Great for opening up the groin, AKA the abductor, no adductor, sorry, adductors. ADD. Ah. Ah. I'm gonna do five the other way too. That's the final exercise for today. Uh, end of the video. See you all tomorrow.